G'day guys, Aussie Share Trader back. Last day of February, we're gonna look forward to March and see if we can pick a few winners. Let's do it. G'day guys, welcome back. It is the last day of February. I can never say that month, speech impediment. February, it's the last day. So we're gonna look forward to, um, to March and uh, see if we can pick a few winners. But first of all, we'll look back to, uh, to that month of uh, Feb and, um, and just see how those uh, went. Uh, the three I picked out last month went. Okay, so the first one was TPM, which is TPG Telecom. Now, uh, looking at the chart, they had a very poor start to the month. Uh, they were 6.35 at the end of last month and very quickly they got down below $6 within a few days uh, during that sort of uh, sell-off in, in early Feb. So um, it was hard work from there. Um, they have sort of come back during the month, they're at 6.25. So they're down, you know, one and a half percent for the month. So uh, not really a winner. I'm um, I'm in these. I was I was in these at six twenty five. So I'm basically break even here. I'm still in them. I'm not giving up on these ones just yet. I'll give them another couple of months. I I was hoping, predicting that they'll get over seven bucks, and uh, I can't see really why they won't. I still like this company quite a lot. So I'm going to hang in there with these ones. We'll see how we go. Now the second one was MYX, which is Main Pharma. Now they were definitely tradable. They were 65 and a half cents um, when, when we did the vid last month. They're currently 72 cents, but within that time, they, they did um, go up and down quite a lot. Now, as you can see, they dipped down, I think they hit about 62 cents. I actually bought these at 63 cents early in the month. And um, I got out, you see that big uh, green candle there when they announced their, uh, their figures. I got out that day uh, too early, unfortunately. I sold at 72 and a half, but I got a 15% gain out of these ones. They actually hit 78. So uh, as soon as I sold, I regretted it, but uh, that's trading. You don't know, I was happy with the 15% gain. Um, and uh, yeah, so they're really a really tradable stock. As you can see, they're quite volatile, which uh, as traders is, is what we like. Just, just gotta be on the right side of these ones. So MYX was a good one. And the last one was Syrah Resources. Now, these were $4.05 uh, this time last month, and they're now $3.51, which sounds pretty bad, down over 10%. Um, but they were tradable. Uh, if you remember back to my last vid, I said, just wait on these ones. Uh, I, I was assuming that they were gonna go down more, and they did, they went down to below 320. Uh, so halfway through the month, they were a uh, definite buy, in my opinion, uh, which I did, I got in at 328. Bit more than I wanted to. I sort of missed the bottom, but that's that's life. Uh, and I'm still in these. Um, I'm I'm hoping you know these definitely get back over four bucks, maybe a bit more. So uh, as I said, these ones were riskier, higher risk reward. Um, you have got to try and just try and time the bottom, which is obviously very hard. But enough volatility there. If you're in sort of below you know 340 or, or less, I think you're on the winner here. But we've got to give it time to play out, so we'll see how it goes over the next couple of months. So that's the three from last month. TPM, which is pretty much even. MYX, which was a really tradable stock. And SYR, which is really tradable if you timed it right. Okay, so that brings us on to this month. And I have uh, three more that I will be watching. Okay, the first one is Kogan, KGN. And I can see what you're thinking. Darren, you're just too late on these ones. They've already gone. And they have, they uh, announced, uh, was it early this week? Uh, no, last week, I think it was, whenever. And uh, the share price has just uh, darted up. Um, so it may look like we're too late on these ones, but but I don't think we are. Uh, I still think there's a fair fair bit in this uh, in this business. Uh, just looking at them, um, the business summary, Kogan.com is a portfolio of retail and services businesses that include Kogan Retail, da 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 da. Kogan is a leading Australian consumer brand renowned for price leadership through digital efficiency. The company is focused on making in-demand products and services more affordable and accessible. Okay, now these, this company has its fingers in a lot of the pies. Um, it started out just, just selling tech equipment online, which is still essentially what it is, but it has massive plans uh, to expand uh, over, over time and, and quite an exciting business uh, to be in at the moment. 
they've got a market cap of around, on, on yesterday's closing price anyway, uh, a market cap of around 830 million. Um, they closed yesterday at 890. Um, their, their first half results were very good. Um, revenue 209 million, up 40%, uh, keeping costs under control. Um, now we've sort of got to look into the future. I'm thinking net profit for this year might, might be around $20 million which uh, if the business is valued at 800 million, gives them a um, PE ratio of around 40, which for this business is probably too cheap. Um, so I don't own these yet, I, I haven't got in, but uh, I do have a buy in at 856. Um, we'll just see if that one gets hit or whether I miss it completely. But um, look, I think they're a really good business and uh, I do want to be a part of this at some stage. So definitely on my watch list for March. Okay, now the second one is a little business called Novati, uh, N-O-V is the code. Um, they're currently at 30 cents, a market cap around about $40 million. Uh, if we read the business summary, it says Novati Group is a global software technology and systems integration provider. Novati's continuing commitment to deliver innovative payments since 1996 has yielded a portfolio of adaptable and proven solutions. Da 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 da. Um, they've got products which include digital wallets, electronic top-up mobile money, bill payment, remittance services, electronic voucher, voucher management systems, etc. Now this company is uh, using the um, blockchain uh, technology to try and provide banking for what we call the unbanked uh, in you know, third, third world countries, people who just don't have bank accounts and probably have no chance of getting them with the traditional systems. So Novati is, uh, is trying to tap into that market um, they are doing quite well. Uh, the figures are, are coming through are quite exciting. Their Q2 report showed um, revenues of 8.7 million, which um, they had net cash from operating activities for, from a, for I think the first time. So that's always a good milestone when a company stops burning cash. So they've, they've done share placements recently, so they have, they have adequate cash there to keep them going and, and to expand. Uh, and one thing I did read is they're looking to become an ADI in Australia, which is an authorised deposit taking institution, which is sort of a bank. I don't think it's officially a bank, but sort of a bank, uh, which is a grandiose sort of dream, I think, but hell, why not? Um, so Novati, a little specky at 30 cents. Um, I like them uh, at this price and over the next few months, hmm, could be a good one, wait and see. Okay, so I've given you two exciting ones. Now I'm gonna give you a really boring one. Uh, now this is a word I can't pronounce either. It is Shiro, I think they're called. S-H-R-I-R-O is the company name. S-H-M uh, is the code. Uh, currently at $1.50 closing price yesterday, which values them around about $140 million. Now, I'll read the business summary. Uh, Shiro Holdings is a kitchen appliances and consumer products market and distributing distribution group operating in Australia and New Zealand. The group markets and distributes a range of products under company-owned brands, including Amiga, Robin Hood, Everdure, Amiga Altice, and third-party brands such as Casio, Blanco, and Pioneer in Australia and New Zealand. Uh, Shira operates in two markets, kitchen appliances and consumer products. Uh, and they're also in the barbecue market, which as Aussies, of course, we love, and they're trying to expand that uh, business uh, worldwide. So they're trying to grow. Right at the moment, they're just a little even business. Revenues is about the, are about the same every year. Really nothing exciting, nothing exciting um, about this business. I just think they're a good buy at $1.50. They have a pretty high yield. I think it's around 7 or 8% uh, at this price. So they pay a divvy. Um, they could be a really good long-term buy if you want to put them in your portfolio. But I just think they're probably too cheap at this price. And I can see a 10 or 15% gain over the next month or two on these ones. So SHM, put them on your watch list for uh, March. Okay guys, so the three for this month were of course, now I forget what they were. Um, what was the first one? Oh, Kogan, that's right, Kogan, uh, which is at $8.90 at the moment. Navati, which is at 30 cents, and Little Shiro, which is at $1.50. So uh, let's keep an eye out for them this month. Okay, so it is the last day of summer today, which means real sport is coming back and I couldn't be happy about this. So I've got, I've got my Dodgers, which I can start watching in the, in the uh, MLB, uh, coming back. We can't forget the mighty Tigers, 
what a year we had last year. I'm not a bad bandwagon supporter. I've been a Tiger supporter all my life. Where are we there? You can see how old this scarf is. This is probably from the 80s. Um, also, can't forget my, my waffle side, the, the mighty Swan Districts, which looks a bit like Collingwood, but it's not. It's Swans, da da da. Uh, so hopefully they have a good year as well. We, uh, we need one. Um, what else we got going on? Okay, I'm doing a video on, probably Saturday I'll put it up, and I think it's a good one about what drives the market up and down. There's one thing that basically drives the market. So I'm gonna talk about that and give you some ideas of how to combat that and uh, help you become a winning trader over time. So if you wanna watch that, you can subscribe if you like um, and uh, you'll get notification when I do that vid. Oh, and the last thing, just uh, the Facebook group, the Aussie Share Trader group, which uh, we've got going on. Uh, I mentioned it in my last vid and got about another 30 or 40 people joined. So uh, it's good, the more the merrier. And uh, you know, don't just be a lurker, get in there, ask some questions and, and respond to other people's questions and get this whole community thing going, uh, which is uh, you know, one of the main intentions I, I even do these vids is I want a community where we can all uh, learn from each other. Okay guys, that is it for this month. Um, uh, yeah, have a good month. It's um, exciting times. I don't know, maybe I say that every month, but a bit of volatility around. Um, trading, I think every month just comes a little bit easier um, with the volatility. And um, yeah, so get out there and make some money. I'll see you soon. Cheers, guys.